Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Pastor John. It is always good to see you today. We're going to be talking about baptism and why it's so important in the Christian life. You might have found this video because you just became a believer and you don't really know what to do with baptism just yet, but I promise you if you watch this video, you'll understand baptism. You'll understand a couple of the arguments behind why we do believer's baptism, not pedo baptism, which is infant baptism. I think it's going to be really helpful for you, and so if you would, please stick around. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. I would love to continue to help you out. So to start and get into it today, we want to make sure that we're always grounding ourselves in the scripture. We always want to have the Word of God is the first and foremost thing. So why do we even do baptism? Here's the thing about Jesus. Jesus was eternal. He was perfect. All of his ways were always good. And yet still, in order to fulfill the plan of God, to fulfill the righteousness of God, Jesus came to this earth and he knew that he wanted to be baptized. So I want to get into the scripture right here. This is from the book of Matthew. So, so a, a guy named John the Baptist, he was in the scriptures and he was baptizing people, getting people ready for the coming Messiah. And he even said, like, look, the one who's coming, I'm not even worthy to un, untie his sandals or to do his sandals for him. How dare I even baptize him? And yet still, Jesus wanted to baptize John the Baptist. And so let's read what it says here. In verse 13, it says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John and to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, Sorry, John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus was baptized, this is, this is such an incredible scene. It says this, when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove coming to rest on him. So this is really incredible because this is one of the only scenes in the scripture where we see, not one of, there's a few different scenes where we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and it's so important for us to know that that Jesus, this is a moment where, where Jesus was showing himself to be incredibly powerful. This was not he didn't need to be baptized to cleanse him of sins. He needed to be baptized because it was part of his obedience to God the Father. And so we fashion our lives after Jesus. So if Jesus was baptized, what makes us think that we shouldn't be baptized? Now, I remember when I was a kid, I became a believer at about 14, and I was terrified to be baptized. I was, I didn't, I didn't want to be the center of tension. I, I didn't want to go up on stage and kind of tell my testimony or anything like that. I was I was actually scared of what it meant to stand in front of people, which is crazy now because I'm a pastor, I'm a musician, like I'm in front of people all the time. But back then, I was really scared about it. I didn't want people to make fun of me or think that I was weird because I was getting baptized. And, and I was talking to my son about this. He actually was baptized. Today is Sunday, the day I'm recording it. Uh, my son was baptized today. And actually, let me go ahead and show you some of that footage. Hey, son, I love you. You're my brother in Christ. Buried in his likeness, raised to you. And so I'm incredibly proud of my son, and I told him this morning while we were getting ready how proud I was because he was fearless. My son put his faith in Jesus and then immediately was like, Dad, I want to get baptized. When I became a believer, it took about eight years for me to actually be baptized. And in those eight years, I was being disobedient to the plan and the design of God for baptism as a sacrament of the church. If that's confusing for you. There are a couple sacraments. Communion being one of them, baptism being one of them. Um, that's what Christians have practiced since the day where Jesus uh, ascended into heaven. So for us, those are two major sacraments. But the question a lot of people have is, does baptism actually forgive my sins? Am I washed clean in the water? And the answer to that is no. I want to read us real quick a, uh, a quote from a guy named Charles Spurgeon, one of my favorite preachers in the scriptures. And in this, Charles Spurgeon says this, to believe is simply to trust, to depend, and to rely upon Christ Jesus. To be baptized is to submit to the ordinance which our Lord fulfilled at Jordan, to which the converted ones submitted at Pentecost, to which the jailer yielded obedience the very night of his conversion. The outward sign saves not. That's enormous in this. The outward sign saves not, but it sets us forth to, to us our death, our burial, our resurrection with Jesus. And like the Lord's Supper, it's not to be neglected. Reader, do you believe in Jesus? Then, dear friend, dismiss your fears. You shall be saved. Are you still an unbeliever? Then remember, there is but one door. And if you 
will not enter by it, you will perish in your sins. And so Spurgeon is making the point, sal- salvation does not happen at baptism. Salvation and baptism are separate events, yet when you are saved, it's an outward sign that you have been forgiven of your sins, that you have set forth your burial in Christ and your resurrection with Christ. Um, that's kind of the symbolism that happens when you when somebody goes down in the water. They are it's a symbol of we are we are now hidden with Christ. We've been we've died with Christ, and then the resurrection is when we will raise with Christ out of the water. And so, um, it is a beautiful, beautiful um, symbol of what God has already done in your heart. It's an outward sign of God, something that God has already done to you internally. And this is just this is such a cool moment in believers' lives because what often happens is people get a, 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 I don't want to say a new power, right? That's that's a little bit too too new agey, maybe a little bit too Pentecostal for you. But uh, I, I do think that when someone is baptized and it's a step of obedience, God unlocks some something new in them, something extra. This, this is going to sound crazy to a lot of people, but I, I've just seen it time and time again where somebody's following Jesus and they haven't been baptized, but then they do get baptized, and their their obedience just, it steps up a game. I don't know, something that the Holy Spirit does in them. And so, like I said, this is an outward sign of something that was happening internally to you, and I actually want to look at another verse real quick. It's Romans 6, verse 3. It says, Do you know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. That's that's what I'm talking about. God is obviously, he's done something in you, something big in your heart. Um, he has saved you from your sins. He's ripped you out of that darkness. And now you're showing the entire church that, hey, I am following Jesus for the rest of my days. Now, one thing we're not getting into today is pedo baptism, infant baptism. I I want my friend, Jeremy JC, he's a Presbyterian guy, um, to do do a video on infant baptism and why they, uh, as Presbyterians, they baptize babies, they baptize infants. It's a good argument. That's the the problem with that is it's such a good argument. You can't say, you know, in, in the scriptures, we have people who baptize their entire family. Like that's that's pretty big, a pretty big sign for them. And, and where they base their argument out of is, hey, look back in the Old Testament. Circumcision was for the families of God, the people of God. And so we've entered into this new covenant with Jesus. He's given us baptism as this is this new sign of what's going on. Why shouldn't we baptize kids in faith that God is going to save them? See, the, the problem with that that I see is that I don't read it in the scriptures. That's why I am a believers baptist but when i read the arguments of people who believe in pedo baptism i'm like man that's that's not a bad argument it's a good argument so i don't think because of the evidence of scripture that that there was a family that was baptized i don't think we can totally throw kind of the <laughs> pun intended baby out with the bathwater. but i'm not totally comfortable with it because um, when i read the scripture i don't see it explicitly said that you know, that that is connected from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And so to end this quick video, I want to just encourage you, if you have started to follow Jesus and your life is now hidden with Christ in God, go to your pastor, ask him if you can be baptized, ask them when the next time they're going to do baptism is. Um, and I promise you, it will be something that will bless you, it will bless your family, and it will bless the church that you belong to. Because when you're baptized, you're essentially saying, hey guys, I'm, I'm proclaiming to you what God has done inside of me in my life, and I'm belonging to this group of believers. I want you to hold me accountable. I want you to help me. I want you to help me grow. And so um, I would encourage you, yeah, if you if you just became a believer, um, I think it's one of the best things you can do is encourage other believers that that you would want to be baptized. Because seriously, when, when I sit in the, the pews, um, and actually we just got rid of our pews, so we don't have those anymore. When I sit in the chairs in a church building and I see somebody else come up out of that water, man, it encourages my heart so much that they're walking with Jesus and they're, you know, this is a new step of obedience and of faith for them. And so it just encourages me. It reminds me of my baptism. It encourages me to kind of want to be more obedient to God and say, hey God, what what are we doing now? Like, 
I was baptized and now my obedience, I've grown in my obedience. I want to be more obedient, God. What do I need to do? Go ahead and hit that like button if you could because that helps out the YouTube algorithm to know that this was a worthwhile video for somebody to watch. Hit the subscribe button for more content like this. On our channel, we talk a lot about current events. We talk a lot about theological topics so that we can grow in our biblical worldview. Guys, I love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you all in the next one.